Al-Mu'allim stresses that combating terrorism is a duty of every Syrian citizen. Lavrov and Fahmi stressed in a press conference that solving the Syrian problem can be only political within the framework of Syrian national dialogue. Russia submits a draft resolution at the UN concerning the humanitarian situation in Syria as an alternative for the Western one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Kikorian with the news in English. Deputy Prime Minister, Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid Al Muallim has met the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Yatilov at his residence in Geneva. Talks centered on Syrian Russian relations and the current meetings in Geneva, as well as the need to follow up this process through the implementation of every provision of the Geneva Statement, particularly the first provision, which is ending violence and combating terrorism. The two sides' stands have been identical regarding the importance of all states' commitment to international resolutions related to combating terrorism and the dedication of all their efforts to fight this problem which jeopardizes security and stability in the region and the world. Both sides also agreed to continue consultations and coordination on all issues in service of both countries and peoples. In a press conference with Gatilov yesterday, Al Muallim said combating terrorism was the duty of every Syrian to protect the homeland. Al Muallim described his talks with Gatilov as useful and fruitful, covering bilateral cooperation as well as the topics on the Geneva II agenda. He said a mutual understanding was reached on how to achieve progress in the dialogue at the conference in implementation of the Geneva I document, which should be discussed one provision after the other. In reply to a question, about the coalition statement that it had presented a document on the Transitional Rule Commission, whereas the Syrian official delegation discussed the provision on terrorism. Mr. Al Muallim said the coalition delegation presented no such document. It made a statement. The Syrian official delegation, Mr. Al Muallim added, made a statement on combating terrorism and on the terrorist crimes committed in Syria and the massacres perpetrated by the terrorists whereas the other delegation does not admit to the presence of terrorism in Syria. On his part, Katilov said the political solution was the only way to solve all problems in Syria, put an end to violence and terrorism, and create the appropriate circumstances for a prosperous future for Syria. Katilov said his meeting with Al Muallim was fruitful. In reply to a question by Sana's correspondent on Russia's stand concerning the provision on ending the violence and combating terrorism, Katilov said, Our stand is steady, namely that terrorism is a very great threat. We realize how dangerous terrorism is, not only for the Syrian people, but for the region as a whole, Gatilov affirmed. We have always warned that there is a terrorist threat in Syria and that this threat is spreading on a wide scale and that we are exerting efforts to fight it, he added. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his Egyptian counterpart Nabil Fahmi have stressed that solving the crisis in Syria should be through political means, affirming the need to combat terrorism and stop all forms of violence within the framework of inter-Syrian dialogue on the basis of the Geneva I statement. In a press conference following talks with Fahmi in Moscow today, Lavrov said, the meeting particularly focused on solving the issues and questions related to terrorism. Emphasis was laid on the fact that this phenomenon does not belong to a certain religion or nationality. It is rather a world lesion that harms humanity as a whole, Lavrov said. He stressed that Russia insists on the need to be committed to the Geneva Statement in all its provisions, rejecting any focus on a certain provision to the exclusion of the others. Russia insists on the necessity of implementing the Geneva Statement with all its items and refuses to focus upon one single issue in a selective way or misreading it as is the case with the so-called transitional government body, marginalizing other issues related to violence and combating terrorism in order to reach a local truth to allow humanitarian aid to enter into the badly affected areas. 
work is underway to solve most outstanding issues related to humanitarian aid into the ancient city of Homs and into an Ayamu camp in Damascus, although the terrorists try to obstruct all relief operations. For his part, Egyptian Foreign Minister Fahmi said that there is an agreement between the two countries about the necessity of rendering the political process successful with regard to solving the crisis in Syria in such a way as to fulfill the aspirations of the Syrian people in a prosperous and better future. Fahmi pointed out that Russia and Egypt agreed to help the countries of the region to solve their problems without foreign intervention. Russia submitted a draft resolution to the UN Security Council on the humanitarian situation in Syria a day after the proposal of a similar Western-backed resolution declined by Moscow and Beijing, given that it undermines the humanitarian efforts in Syria. According to Russia Today website, Alexei Zaitsev, press attaché of the Russian mission at the UN, confirmed the submission of the draft resolution, stressing that it is an alternative of previous set by Australia, Jordan and Luxembourg, and backed by Britain, the USA, and France. Zaitsev did not reveal details related to the content of the resolution, as it is expected that the UNSC will discuss both resolutions during the upcoming days for conducting a unified text for the resolution. Welcome back. Dozens of terrorists who tried to infiltrate from Lebanon via Uzair's site into Tel Kelag suburbs have been intercepted and eliminated by the Syrian Arab army units. The arms and ammunition which they were trying to get into Syria in favor of the terrorists in Azara village in Homs suburbs were also destroyed. In Aleppo, Syrian Arab army units eliminated terrorists in different areas in Aleppo, including Bustan al-Basha and al-Masaraniya. Syrian Arab army units targeted eight sites for the terrorists and destroyed the terrorists then in Darit Azza. In Hama and Idlib suburbs, Syrian Arab army units eliminated a terrorist gang in Attah and Arnaba towns and destroyed their vehicles. Among the terrorists killed were two Saudis, two Jordanians and one Iraqi. Army units also killed terrorists affiliated with Al Nusra organization in Zur al Qaada village. In Dar'a, Syrian Arab army units attacked terrorist gatherings in four neighborhoods in Dar'a city in the towns of Al Lajad and Ghabarib and near Salmin town. In Hama countryside, Syrian Arab army foiled an infiltration attempt by terrorists into Suran town in order to enter Hama city. Army units dismantled explosive devices planted by terrorists in Hama Aleppo highway. Homs Governor Talal Barazi has said that the process of the evacuation of the besieged civilians and the flow of humanitarian assistance rendered to the civilians who want to remain in the area has been extended. Moreover, the cases of 70 people between 15 and 55 years old have been settled and they have been evacuated from the ancient part of Homs. Finally, a British independent daily correspondent brands the assault by terrorists on Syria's historical antiquities and archaeological relics as the worst catastrophe that has befallen ancient monuments since the destruction of a big statue in Bamiyan by Taliban in 2001. Within the framework of the systematic terrorist operations to destroy and plunder Syria's civilization heritage, which is thousands of years old, the British Independent Daily correspondent Patrick Cockburn has warned that such operations may represent the worst catastrophe that has befallen ancient monuments since Taliban movement in Afghanistan demolished a big statue of Buddha in Bamiyan in 2001. 
In a report, Cockburn disclosed that the terrorists whom he described as the Islamist fundamentalists have been set on destroying historical treasures, whether statues or mosaics, which date back to the Byzantine, Greek, and Roman eras. Cockburn said that in the middle of last January, the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant destroyed a mosaic painting that dated back to the Byzantine era in the 6th century near a Raqqa city north of Syria. The Islamist fundamentalists also destroyed other sites that included carvings in a Roman cemetery in the governorate of Aleppo. Syria abounds with important archaeological sites, including the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus and its splendid murals, and Ebla in the governorate of Idlib that dates back to the Bronze Age, and which particularly flourished in the 2nd and 3rd millennium BC, where nearly 20,000 cuneiform plates were discovered. Cockburn added that the most famous archaeological sites in Syria are in danger because they are under the control of the armed groups, citing as an example St. Saman Church, which has been turned by the armed men into a training area. The American Washington Post Daily had earlier said the armed groups smuggled Syrian archaeological relics outside the country to sell them in an illegal way. With this to end our news for today, thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Karun Kirkjian, but after a short break.